Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly, and uh, I've got a good one for you today because by popular demand, uh, so many people have written me and said, bring the stock guy back, bring Bob back. So yeah, Bob Kudla, guys. So, uh, so much to cover right yeah. now. I'm glad you're here. Thanks uh, for joining me. Crazy. And finally, we got nice weather after doing this for a oh, year. Oh my gosh. How many <laughs> times? We got rained on last time. It is. It's uh, pretty funny. Uh, but uh, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, Bob runs Train Genius. We'll talk about that just a little bit. But I want to talk about something that I've been, you know, we've been texting each other and phone calls and everything. We didn't cover the banking debacle last time because we didn't see each other last month. You were traveling so much and, and you couldn't make it down. So yep. you saw Silicon Valley Bank go down and, and Signature and now First Republic, you know. Yeah, look, it's, it's just beginning, Dan. So um, <clears throat> what they did here was... And if this is old news, guys, you can you can just skip to my end of my sentence. But you know, this was these banks set themselves up, and the um, they 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 got loans, um, uh, T bills that were went underwater because the Fed started raising interest well, if, rates. Explain that in that people buy, you know, uh, everybody thinks, hey, interest rate. If you have something and you've got a security, and the interest rates go up, that's a good thing. Well, not for T bills. Basically, you're losing money. Is that correct? Yeah, so they were buying five-year and ten-year bonds, and they were buying them at one and two percent. And then when they went to five and six percent, they're underwater sixty, eighty percent. Normally, it doesn't matter because they held them. It's called hold to mature uh, maturity. But what happened was somebody spooked Silicon Valley Bank, and people pulled their deposits. And when they pulled their deposits, people realized that they don't have the cash to cover the deposit withdrawal. And then everybody got a basically a proctology exam. <laughs> And they realized all these regional banks did the same thing. But the Fed set them up. Uh, you know, they told them everything was fine. They told them that, um, inflation was transitory. They told them lower for longer. And then they pulled the rug out from these banks. But look, this is just the beginning because it's it, it, they got a pause right now. But what's happening is people are still pouring money out of these banks. They're going into 90-day T-bills oh, and the money I market accounts. I could do stats that I've got, you know, you know, wrapped in my small head where you've got you know, so much, you know, that is, that is exiting the banks. And now we're seeing it happen in foreign countries too. So this is a, a global phenomenon that you're seeing with the cash leaving banks right now. Yeah. And it, it leads to credit collapse. And when you have credit collapse and small businesses collapse, and then it just rolled right up the chain. You can see it. Job openings in the, in the last month have collapsed. You know, they keep talking about us not being in a recession. We're in a recession. Absolutely. And, and so they'll come around to it in August and September. But we're in a recession now, and that means that cash flows are drying up. Companies have to reborrow at higher rates. Companies now have to dilute shares, and so we're really at a, a crossroads, Dan, right now in terms of the stock market, where there's really no good alternative. Like if they if they try to save the markets, they we rip energy prices up. If they try to not save the market, um, you know, with energy and and they collapse the market. So they can't like they can't Goldilocks this anymore. They're done, and then geopolitics are are what they are so i think we're gonna have a dragged out debt thing too you know one thing that i'm i'm lucky that i have you on speed dial because i always say if this happens you know what do i do next and what do you do next and let's cover this for the audience real quick and you run trade genius academy and uh uh tell everybody a little bit about trade genius yeah so what we've done is we've created a couple of very effective algorithms that look at at basically levels and momentum and seasonality for stocks, cryptos, and we trade options and futures as well. And what that has done for us, it basically takes the emotion out of trading and allows us to, um, quote unquote, buy low and sell high because we can see where the buying momentum's coming in. That's real, not fake buying. And where selling's coming in, where it's not fake selling. And with that, we're able to create a you know, a win rate that's uh, right now we're running at 66% win rate. And we have what's called a, a positive profit factor, which means that we win more than we, when we win more money. And then we, when we lose, we lose less when we do lose on a trade because you do lose about one third of the trade. So with that, you know, our system allows you to just grind your way to profits. We don't care what the stock market does. If the market's stalling like it is now, we could trade what's called credit spreads which allows you to just basically harvest income or you can sell calls against your position. And when the market falls, there's trades. And when the market goes higher, there's trades. And with that, you can trade with us stocks, cryptos. The crypto stocks are really hot. They just went through a nice tear. 
and you could trade options and futures with us. And if you let me do a quick pitch, yeah, um, go ahead. you know, we were running specials now to the 13th of May. You can get 65% off one of seven of our bundles. And if you um, don't want anything in the bundles, you want to just pick something from the store, just use promo code uh, mother and you can uh, get 40% um, off the store. It's either mom or mother you can use and you can then get gross to net off the, uh, off the uh, retail price. The bundle's are already pre-discounted. We, we, what we charge, Dan, is nothing compared to what you get out of it. We're very modest in terms of what we charge. Plus, you know, yeah. I've had Sony Hill write me and say, do you have access to him? And if I sign up for that, do I get access? Yes, you do. And and I just, you know, there's so much to cover right now. And we'll go back to that in a second. But sign up for it, guys, because it's absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, I, you've seen people, uh, you know, you've told me stories where people just make, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you know, a day. And then you multiply over the course of uh, weeks, and then they end up making tremendous amounts of money over a longer period of time. You yeah, know, I'll know. give. You, let me give you an example. And in fact, I sent you. He, he just shot me a note today. He, he's been with us for ninety days. He's done eighty trades. He said he lost the first five of them because he didn't know what he was doing, and he won the let. He won the last seventy-five trades, and he's he's making a hundred, two hundred dollars on every one of those trades. And he's making fifty-eight percent. What's called. Uh, return on investment of what he, the capital that he's risking on each trade. And these are very, very low risk trades. They're, these are the credit spreads I refer mm -hmm. to. And we have an algorithm that we call the Kona because I love Hawaii and Kona is sunny. And so you're happy and you, feels, you feel like the sun's shining on you when you're taking this trade. And we can see when the market is pushing up too high mm -hmm. or pushing down too low and we catch those fades in. So you don't have to take what's called directional risk. You take... Uh, you, you, what you're calling, you're fading the trade. So you don't have to even be right to make money, Dan. You just have to not be wrong. Yeah. And if you want to trade that, you have to, you do have to go into the VIP room to do it because we call a lot of those trades out and you kind of have to be available for the trades. You just can't be a passive investor of that. But if you're serious about making, you know, $100 or $200 a day, you're making twenty to $40,000 a year. And you don't even need a big account for that. You mm -hmm. can do that with twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000. So, okay. But with the, yeah, so it's, it's I most of my trading's that way. I love it. It's uh takes a lot of uh headache and, and anxiety out of your trading. Okay. Now let's go back to the banks real quick. Okay, first things first, we have not seen the end of the banking debacle, have we? It's not even close. From all my research, you know, Bob, I have I think it's fifty-two regular resources that I have, plus all my subscribers that send me stuff, plus guys like you, plus everybody that I have access to, and you know everything points to these things just teeter. And we just got, you know, notification that there are 722 banks that have unrealized losses. There's trillions of dollars when you add it up in unrealized losses. And uh, that's with the credit. So this is something that people should be concerned about. They just shouldn't sit back and say, oh, it'll figure itself out because it's not going to happen. No, we're, we're really in a pause before the next, next move down. They're going to force another set of consolidations here over the next 90 days because the, um, the, the outpouring from these deposits into higher yielding assets is unrelenting right now. And the banks just can't absorb it. And as, you know, people say, well, the Fed's gonna give them money to tide them over, but the Fed's charging them 5% for the money and the, and the, loan, and the, and the, the paper they're holding is 2%. So it's, it's one of those things where you're losing money, but you're making it up on volume. Yeah. So the, the old show. Yeah, yeah. So the banks are in, are in big trouble. And, uh, and people are, look, you know, the age of the internet, you know, play, play, you know, social media sites like yourself, you know, in the past, it could take weeks for it to dribble out to everybody. Now you get on there, you talk to a hundred thousand people tomorrow, people are changing, they're moving their money yeah. and they have their smartphones and they just turn right around and just boom, boom out. And you can literally in five minutes move money from a checking account into a, into a, into a, a you know, a fed treasury mm -hmm. uh, account, or if you have it in your, in your stock portfolio, it takes two minutes to buy a 90 day T bill, 5.2% right now. Now, um, you know, I'd heard that JP Morgan, they're, uh, you know, negative for their, their selling short. They, they have their short position on metals right now. And that if that caught them, it would be more, it would be worth more than what the entire JP Morgan, all their assets are. Is that correct? Yeah. They, I mean, their, their derivative books are, are scary. If we really truly had a look at those, you know, we'd be getting on a boat and we'd be heading out to some deserted Island. Yeah. I mean, it's really, these guys have leveraged us to the max 
Yeah, so, you know, J.P. Morgan's trying to sneak out the back door with this stuff. So, uh, and same with the other bags. That's why they're doing a lot of the games that they're doing. But the derivatives, you know, you have you have notionals in the quadrillions. You can't even wrap your mind around it. Mm -hmm. But they're definitely, and the German banks and the Swiss banks are underwater bigger than the country's GDPs. So if this thing really came push to shove, then, you know, this whole thing just comes down like a Jenga game at the end. Okay, so... What do people do, Bob? What do you think that, you know, if somebody's in their bank and uh, we have everybody from, from fixed income to people just starting out to really wealthy people on the channel, it's like you got to have a bank. you got to have a way to pay your bills. So to sit there and say, take it all out, what do I do? Take 80 grand out and put it in my mattress. You, you can't do that. It's not, it's not feasible. No, you, know? you don't have to do that at all. So, you know, we have a couple bank accounts that have just about that much in, in some of them. Mm -hmm. And so we just sweep them. You can just sweep them out into uh, into a treasury account or a money market account. We sweep our, ours out. Um, we get enough money in there. We sweep it into uh, our stock um, account with Schwab. And then we sweep those right into 90-day uh, T-bills, paying 5.2%. Okay. If you need the money, it's one day and sweep it back out and you have cash. You know, so... Pretty hard to get a line of credit now, but if you get a line of credit, have that and then keep a minimal, minimal amount of cash in for the monthly needs. You brought up a great point, and that is, you know, it, it's also important to have, a, you know, some serious financial advice and real, you know, financial uh, advisors when you sweep accounts and you do things like that. And uh, I, I, you know, educate yourself, guys, and also educate yourself with the people that you do business with. That's the one thing I always recommend. And, uh, you know, the stock market is, like you said, it's flat lately. It's just kind of sitting there, and we're waiting for this big crash. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, I know yeah. I know, you're, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, but what do you think is going to happen over the next 60, 90 days? Yeah, so uh, really the, um, the event of the year is the, uh, the debt negotiation. And so I think if people view that as being stretched out, it's going to collapse economic activity because they're going to have to uh, spend less money at the treasury just to manage incoming cash. So that's gonna be heavy on the market. So there, you know, we pretty much will go long, um, long-term um, treasury bonds like TLT. But when Janet Yellen's done and negotiations are complete, which they will get completed, it just could be a 60, 90 day thing. There's no default, so just take that out of your lexicon, uh, is that um, those, those bonds are gonna turn the other way because she's gonna to have to go and go to the markets and sell treasuries. And that's gonna make the price of the 10 year yield go higher. You buy TBT and then you also short the market because the market's gonna, is gonna probably, uh, uh, I hate the word crash, but the market's gonna crash down because all the liquidity that she's been putting in by writing her checkbook down is she's gonna have to refill her checkbook. And when she refills her checkbook, she gets that money from the banks. And then the banks have less money to speculate and less money to lend out, it's called basically a liquidity squeeze. And that's what's going to happen. $770 billion she needs over the next six months once she's done. It, it'll cause great severe uh, stress on the stock market. We wouldn't be surprised to see us touch the low that we had at the end of 21, 22. Okay. No, I mean, excuse me, 22 in October for the lift. Okay. We'll probably test those levels again. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Are you still, you know, your opinion on metal? Silver just, you know, is hovering $25, $26 a sh uh, an ounce right now. And, uh, you know, uh, the silver ratio compared to the stock market is more attractive to me. It is, you know, uh, gold is always an attractive uh, investment. I just think gold's going to shoot up. And Bank of America last month stepped forward and said they thought that uh, uh, gold could go as high as three thousand dollars an ounce, and I was like, when that was sent to me, I was like, "Wow, Bank of America is now stepping into it." So, what do you think about gold and silver right now? Yeah, so um, I like silver over gold for the same reasons you do because I think it's more undervalued. And then I also, um, and if I could mention people, if you if you go to our podcast, uh, Trade Genius, every day, and if you go into the into the comments area, and you actually leave us uh, an email, I'll send you a, a report that we did on the safest commodities that you can buy geopolitically. Okay. And uh, the reason why I say that. I'm that's sorry. on YouTube also, guys. I know you guys say, you interrupt Bob every time he talks, but that's on YouTube, uh, Trade Genius, your, your podcast. Yeah, and it's not really a plug so much as really a help for you guys because a lot of people ask me all the time what commodities we should buy. You want to stay in the Anglo world. 
So, you know, I love silver, so I love Hecla mining. Mm -hmm. I love uh, wheat and precious metal. Those are my two. And then I have some GDX, GDXJ. And then, um, but more than silver, uranium. And uranium is getting a bump this week. So uranium, the uranium story is going to be economic uh, irrelevant. People need to get it. So I would say silver and uranium. Get it for what, the electric cars or for the power of the... the power the, of the grid. The, the grid. Yeah, because the electric car thing is still... Um, I think we're on the fence whether that thing's going to go or not because they don't have enough charging capacity. But there's definitely, definitely people are we're underproducing electricity in the world, and they're and they're, they're they don't want to be caught with another Russia situation in Europe. So people are building nuke plants like crazy. How about so, Sri Lanka? <laughs> oh, Sri Lanka, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a different problem. Jeez yeah. Louise, don't listen yeah. to the WEF, yeah. you know. But yeah, uranium's going to be hot, and uh, and the United States and Canada have two really nice stocks to buy. You know, Quad U, which is U, 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 and CCJ. I mentioned these before on his show. Mm -hmm. They're still going well. They just started pushing up again um, on Monday, and I think they're on their next their next thing higher. There's also UAC, UEC, there's URG. There's, there's other stocks out there, but those are my two favorites that I personally own and own long term. So you can, um, you, you, silver is good too. Silver's beaten up so much that I have a hard time pushing it down when it goes down. Yeah. But if this stock market rolls over, energy is going to go, and stock market's going to go, and uh, I mean, silver's going to probably go down could too. Could we see? Could, okay, so if the stock market goes down, do you think that uh, we're going to see silver go down too at the same time? Same time, but not the same rate. Okay. So it's going to be what they call a higher low, and it'll, and it'll start to uh, separate from the stock market. And that's what you're looking for. The key in the stock market trading is you look for what's called divergences. Why isn't this stock going down while the market's crashing? So you start looking at that. Oh, well, they have a story where they have an edge or they have a moat or money's moving in there. That, that's where you pay attention to, to those stocks. So, and we see those things and we're watching them every day. And um, like I said, our Kona thing, it's a Sentinel. So it, it, it's scanning all the time. And if you actually join our room, you, you actually, it, the bot will, will pop them up for you. You don't even have to look for them. And then you can evaluate whether you want them or not. I did this not just for you guys. I did it for me because I hate looking every day. And I get three, four, five, six trades a day pop up. And I take advantage of one or two of those every day. And, uh, and that's what you do. There will be opportunities within these things. But for me, for silver, I'm waiting for the market to crash so that I can see which ones are going to rise first. And then you jump on those hard, okay. just like in 2009, and you'll make four or 500%. Wow. Okay. Awesome. So, okay. So uranium... Uh, we talked about, you know, last time was basically winter. It was raining on us last time. Anything with uh, the natural resources, any natural gas, anything uh, else that, uh, um, you know? Yeah. So natural gas, um, I was dead wrong on. Uh, so I, I expected it to rise into seasonality into June. And for whatever reason, I, it climbed a little bit, but it just keeps it's hitting the floor at $2. We're watching it, but definitely was wrong on that. Uh, coal should continue to move higher because they're um, they're building 58 like coal plants like a month. I mean, some crazy number of coal plants are being built in India and China right now. So they're going to do well as well. And then, like I said, uranium's uh, still my favorite. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see what else the uh, uh, the banking stocks we've covered. Anything else that you think is uh, you know you know the home builders? You think that those are in in trouble right now? Yeah, they're in big trouble. The The uh, permits are down um, and uh, sales are down and, and commercial real estate, you know, that's that's dead for a decade. So you want to stay away from commercial real estate. Uh, my two friends that are in the foreclosure market, the thing that they said that's keeping them in business is that the commercial market is ticking up each week and they're having more and more action in the commercial properties because they're finally going after these people. You know, yep. never in history, guys, could you not pay your mortgage and them not come collect on it. And uh, no matter how friendly you were with the banks, and now they're finally having to pay up on these uh, commercial loans. So we're seeing that. Yeah, especially since if these banks get rolled over, like First Republic went to J.P. Morgan, J.P. Morgan's not going to carry any bad um, bad paper on their books. They're going to go right after those guys and clean them right out. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is if 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 asset prices fall too much on a loan, certain loans have um, you know toggles in them that they can require you to put up more collateral. So depending on what kind of loan you're in, you can, these guys can be screwed and they'll just walk away. Absolutely. And the, the thing about this is that commercial real estate, you know, it's, a, it's actually a pretty simple industry based on, you know, uh, how much rent you're collecting, how full the building is, 
you know, that determines the value of the property. And then if you can refinance that or not, and uh, I've had people write me and say, you don't understand. These are adjustable rate loans. These people are fine. I'm like, well, interest rates have gone up. They haven't gone down over the course of the last year. So yeah. we haven't seen, you know, this is bad for these people. We, we, you know, we have flagship buildings here in Southern California that have gone, that have been lost and gone back to the bank or been, or have been right. sold at reduced prices. Well, a lot of these guys have cliffs. They, they, they've been paying interest only for five years. And then not only do they have to um, you know, either make the, the pay the loan off or they have to refinance it. Now they're refinancing a 2% loan at 10%. Yeah. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're underwater on the loan. I don't care if you're hundred percent occupied, you're not getting the lease and people are walking away and they're not coming back. Yeah. So, so, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be a big problem. So anything in, in construction is that, a, you know, I, I would, I would stay away from, but it, there is an area though that you should be excited about is that crypto will go down with the stock market go down, but the yeah. crypto miners are going to come out of this thing like a rocket. I don't know if you guys noticed last weekend it was the first time a block traded it <clears throat> for, for a higher fee than the subsidy. And that means that those who are mining and winning those those um, uh, those algorithms are are collecting higher fees, and so there's going to be a um, when Bitcoin starts moving again, there's going to be a uh, basically an Oklahoma land rush for the best crypto miners out there, and you know there you you're probably looking at 10x kind of moves coming up. I wow. mean, you know, you're talking like you know Mara from you know nine to ninety. You're looking at Wolf. You know, these guys already had. 300% move since the last time Dan and I spoke. They're pulling back again. They'll probably pull back again. To, they got to they got to back and fill a little bit. If Bitcoin goes down to 24, 25,000, like Mara will push down into the sevens. Okay. And that's when I probably will load up the boat on Mara again. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? I mean, any individual stocks that you're that you're uh, keen on right now? Anything that uh, that you think you think the airlines are good? You think? Uh, uh, any vacation, any hotels, any resort things, or anything like that. Anything that's seasonal. Yeah, the only thing that I'm really, really, um, I've been trimming like crazy. So, you know, anything I own in energy now it ha has a dividend on it, or it's Exxon Mobil. You know, the moat, and um, you know, uranium for sure. CCJ and uh, Quad U. I own quite a bit of BTU. They they said they're going to buy back 25 percent of their shares over the next 12 months. Wow. It's 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 dirt cheap cheap right now. They haven't reacted to that news, and I think that's a mistake on um, investors' part. I think it's going to be a steal in there and uh, and beyond. That. And then I like Scorpio Tankers. Um, that that's a tanker that it went up from eight dollars up to seventy. It pulled all the way back down to forty four, forty five, and now it's starting to move again. I just bought that back again in it, this morning, and it's already starting to move up to forty eight dollars. So. Um, some of the tankers are going to be good too, but I like Scorpio. It has good pricing power. And remember when oil gets weird and things start to re have recession, they hold oil on the boats and they can make money uh, trading what's called the contango trade on the futures. Wow. And they, as long as it, they can make more money trading the oil sitting in the tanker than they pay the tanker rates, then they, uh, they'll keep doing it. Okay. And so the tankers will start lifting their rates and then it's just free money. So keep an eye on Scorpio. They're not the only ones. Just look for oil tankers, VLCC tankers. You'll like it. TRMD is another one. I don't own that one. I have owned it in the past, but that's another great one too. They've said that we're in a freight recession right now, and uh, we're in a trucking recession right now. And uh, the trucking industry, I just covered this last week, where they said that uh, uh, we're if we don't see a turnaround between now and Memorial Day, that the trucking industry is going to be completely upside down. Well, it's like nothing's going to happen between now and Memorial Day. We're all some people are going to start ordering things and shipping things and and moving cargo. That's just not going to happen. So people need to be realistic with this. Yeah, and some of them already filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. So it's going to be a big roll up on those. But I wouldn't buy any big freight companies until you get to the bottom of this thing and then buy the big boy because they're going to be able to pick up all the assets on the cheap. California is kind of weird because they're trying to change what kind of trucks we drive. We may have a situation where we'll have a supply chain problem out here because, you know, idiot knew some, you know, um, but hey, you'll get your reparations. Oh, no, you're not going to get your reparations. You know, this guy is just, he, he, he's a liar and he's an idiot. And this guy running our state. So, um, okay. <laughs> let's just, oh, let I that, really feel let about that it. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> okay. Now, um, as far as the, okay, but, you know, electric trucks. You know, the, the, there's a police department in South Pasadena just announced that they're going to go all electric vehicles. And uh, it hasn't worked 
you know, in Michigan, there were, there were police chases where the cars were parked on the side of the road because they ran out of uh, juice. I, I love stuff like that. I love stories like that. And uh, I think that we're just in for more of that right now. So, yeah. Um, you know, as far as, our, do you feel any positive about any of the EV companies, car companies right now? No, I think, I think Tesla's just hanging on by a thread. So the uh, reason why Tesla's not going down is because the market's not going down. It's linked to the um, passive, link, you know, market cap weighted index. So can't really short it just yet. When the market rolls over, Tesla will be a great short. The problem they're having is that Ford's losing $60,000 on every EV card they're producing. And so is that insane guys, is insane. 60 grand a car. And so, you know, it's like, uh, what's that? The Mirai, the uh, hydrogen car that Toyota produced that, uh, they, lo they lost money on. And it was, it's, I've heard a myriad of things that it's 22,000, 12,000, all this stuff, but you can steal those cars now, but the hydrogen's so expensive. Yeah. It makes that. no sense. The problem is when you force people into a non-economic decision, you get a lot of resistance. You know, 60% of people who own an EV will not get another EV. That should tell you everything you need to know. If you live in a home and you have solar and you can plug in, you're, you know, you're reasonably okay. If you just, like I do, I just beep up around here. I don't go anywhere. I take long trips. And so I take long trips. I have to fly or rent a car mm -hmm. if I had an EV. And so, so people aren't, aren't going for it. And if you have an apartment, good luck getting a charging station. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. You're, you're kind of screwed. And I think people realize that. So this whole thing is going to go away. Sometimes you need a big recession to kind of purge the idiocy out of everything. Well, okay. And let's talk about that. We're in a recession. Things are off. Restaurants are off. Vegas is off. Travel's off. You know, things are, are, are definitely not the same. You know, restaurants are, are cutting their hours. They're cutting their staffs. We are seeing this all around. And hiring, you're seeing people that are not, you know, the, the jobs, like you said, they're not filling the spring jobs like they normally would. That's right. And look at Airbnb, it's reported. And we had a report just a month before that travel is running at 120% of 2019 level. A lot of that was, um, um, you know, pent up demand from the, from the COVID uh, mm -hmm. restrictions, but Airbnb reported, they had decent reporting, but their guidance was, was not that good. And it, it dropped 15%. And Airbnb is a great, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, a canary in the coal mine okay. for, you know, the... Um, so they're a good gauge. You yeah. Think, for, uh, for Sorry, I got distracted. Somebody was staring right at me. No. Here while so the, the gauge for the, uh, yeah. um, uh, for the industry, the travel industry. Yeah, so Airbnb's, and, and that one's way overvalued too. And there's, there's been a lot of negative people are tired of the fees. The hosts are tired of the fees. Oh, it's ridiculous. So, you know? yeah, so there's going to be a big issue here with uh, travel. You got to watch them and then... Uh, the airlines are going to probably get a good guy because of the um, of the of gasoline going by. <laughs> my my favorite was a guy came <laughs> out and says, "Hey, we want to give you a free week to stay at our uh, at our uh, villa." And I'm like, "Okay, great." And uh, you can bring all your friends out and you can shoot all your videos. And we just have to pay the cleaning deposit. I said, "That's cool. Let's look at some dates." Well, okay, the cleaning deposit's twenty five hundred. <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, well, no, I could stay at a hotel for less than that for the week." So. Yeah, it's insane. And I'm staying at a going to Hawaii in um in a couple of weeks and and I'm staying a couple of days in a in a place where I did I had Airbnb it. I didn't realize I was doing it. It's just been one hassle after the other. They just nickel and dime you, they they bore ass you with paperwork, they're not very uh friendly and, and so I'll never do it again. And and that's I guess my story is kind of common. Mm -hmm. And so um yeah, it's gonna be a big issue. And plus look, everybody's broke. I don't know if you guys seen the uh the credit card we're at max max pain and limits on credit cards right now so i don't know how, where where and how people are going to spend their money you well know? it's gonna so, it's this is the time when people normally make these decisions and they're maxed out the credit card limits they went up uh 26 billion dollars in the first quarter you know it it's it's a ton it's month over month people are borrowing more and it's you know that they're not buying things you know they're not buying tvs and trips and and motorcycles, they're spending this money Surviving. Uh, to survive. So, it's well, there's, be there's another thing too. The, most people don't know. They did a hiatus on the defaults for the uh, loans for student loans, but they they raised the limits for people and they allowed them to continue to borrow. And people, even they're out of school, people borrowed up to their new limits. So, I mean, it's just and you these know, people are not in school. For, oh, that's not. No, like I'll get it's some more details on that for you guys. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, you got to gotta look at it. They, they, they lifted it up and people are like, they're scratching their heads. You know, somebody wrote an article said, 
more avocado toast. You know, it's like, I don't know what people are thinking, but this, the problem with this whole, what's happening now is it stops, it stops on a dime. And then, then the politicians are going to get panicky mm -hmm. and then they're going to make dumb decisions. So we're really, really, I think between now and the end of 2024, it's going to be really rocky. If you're a trader, there will be some opportunities, but we're going to go through a time like we did when 2021, when we kind of topped out between fourth quarter and January mm -hmm. and that first quarter where there's going to be really no place to hide. Okay. And you're going to be better off just in cash. Now in, uh, in real estate, do you think that it's going to continue to go down? Because I, I think that we haven't seen anything yet as far as this. And every expert I've talked to that's been around for 25, 30 years, these people, you know, they don't want it to go down, of course, because it's what they do to earn a living. But they all are like, hey, what you're saying is true. There's going to be, you know, a major collapse. You're going to see builders, I think, that are not going to complete homes. I think that you're going to see these, these five-story dormitory things that they're building around the country. And uh, I stopped showing those pictures, guys, that you guys send me because it's the same thing. I, and I don't care if you're in Michigan, if you're in Iowa, we're getting those same things. And I don't know who wants to live in those dormitories like that. That's in for here. They're 800 grand for those right. things. Right. North Korea. Yeah. So, so you know, we've been following um, in a couple of years, we're, we're, we're going to be buying a property out of state. We're not going to move just a place to go. We're, we're uh, just a little bit of time away stuff. So we've been watching now. In, well, my wife's been for a year and now we're starting to see the same properties that were on earlier are coming back with reduced the realtors pinging us we're like hey we're still two years away from this we're two years away from making any kind of real estate purchase so um uh, so i'm watching it really really closely and after a while nobody would talk to you at all now you're starting to see people reduce 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 because they get to a point where they have to actually get out of their properties now, people don't know the word patience and that's the thing you're seeing this what they call golden handcuffs where people have really good loans, but life happens, Bob, people lose jobs, people get divorced, people get a job change, you know, uh, or, you know, they just don't make the money that they made when they bought the house originally. People, so. pe people pass away and their kids can't afford it. They're going to dump the house and you're starting to see more and more and more of those things. That is the largest thing right now when it comes to inheriting property is that people cannot afford the, uh, the taxes and the upkeep and everything to maintain uh, mom's house. So, it's happening all the time. So, you know, let's do me a favor. Uh, uh, let's hit uh, Trade Genius one more time. Tell everybody the discounts. The, the, I'll make sure I put the link below for you guys. Uh, but go ahead. So what's the discounts right now? Yeah. So TradeLikeAGenius.com. Uh, the bundles, seven of them are 65% off. They're pre-discounted. And the uh, non-bundle items are retail to discount of 40%. Use promo code mom or mother and take advantage of it by the 13th of May. And like I said, the pricing, what we charge on it is uh, um, very fair to you. It's, we give the ROI to you on these and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy being with what we do. And, you know, we, we give you trades, we teach you how to trade, and we give you access to the chat rooms and in some cases directly to myself and our other traders. And uh, uh, so you can ask questions and learn and get educated. And so uh, check it out. I think you'll like what we, we have to offer. Thanks That's for awesome. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, but again, everybody loves uh, when you come out and it was a long two months. So uh, thank you for today. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check out uh, tradelikeagenius.com. And check out his podcast, too, on uh, YouTube every day that they do. Because, uh, you know, knowledge is power, guys, with everything. Uh, and when it comes to trading, you need someone like Bob who's been around the block and has done it for decades. So uh, onward and upward, guys. We will see you very soon. Great, thank you.